Hello, everyone. It is my signal delight to come to you to talk with you on this day that we observe as Religious Liberty Day 2021. This day is here again. We are at this point once again, the observance of Religious Liberty Day. A proclamation was issued by the United States President declaring January 16th as Religious Liberty Day. This proclamation casts a spotlight on the importance of religious freedoms on this particular day. However, the Guyana Conference Religious Liberty Department decided to shift its observation from January 16th to January 23rd instead because of calendar programming. According to Article 18 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, everyone has the right of freedom of thought conscience and religion. This right includes freedom to change his religion or belief and freedom either alone or in community with others and in public or private to manifest his religion or belief in teaching, practice, worship and observance. Three rights are here identified. The right of thought, the right of conscience and the right of religious practice. They are non-negotiable for every human being, regardless of skin color, social standing, or affiliation. As we reflect on the significance of religious freedom in our present society, we note the many challenges people face to freely practicing their religious convictions. We note the many cases requiring students to attend classes on their day of worship. We also note the intentional discrimination in hiring policies based on religious affiliation in some companies and organizations. And even yet, we note that the LGBTQ plus movement, though given certain freedoms and practice, are attempting to use services of the church to endorse their practices. In so doing, the church is being pressured to violate its collective conscience. We also see sanctioned sections of organized religion crossing over and endorsing political positions from their pulpits and through their various publications. We restate the necessary separation between relig the religious and the political, for history has shown us that whenever these two vital institutions of society come together and are amalgamated, the outcome has been disastrous for the conscience of the honest. As we pay attention to these and many other forms of violations, we are prodded to redouble our efforts to bring attention to this sensitive ministry in our church. On this day that we celebrate as Religious Liberty Day, we must spare a thought, pray for and work for the downtrodden the way Jesus did. As we observe this day, let it be our desire to sanitize our lives and congregations of race hate, racial supremacy, bigotry, superiority complex, xenophobia, prejudice, and every form of intolerance on the grounds of religion. We owe it to ourselves, our church, and our God to see every human the way God sees us in Acts 17, 26, where Paul declares, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell upon the face of the earth. One of the most potent tools God has given us to use in his service is the commonality of our humanity. We are most effective in helping others when we see them as we are and not better or worse. My prayer for us today is that we sense the significance of the times to which we have come and discover the nearness of that fatal declaration that will be the mother of all violations of religious liberty, thus paving the way for the greatest persecution that will come to those who do not have the mark of the beast in their forehead or in their hands. But God's people will be sheltered under the wings of the Almighty. We must be ready for that time by watching, working, and praying. On my personal behalf, on behalf of the Diana Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, our three administrators, on behalf of the PARL Department, and on behalf of the Guyana Religious Liberty Association, we wish all happy Religious Liberty Day. God bless you.